Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Betty Atruda, and welcome back to Total War Three Kingdoms, where last time we learnt an awful lot about our neighbours and the shape of the world that is forming around us, and it is not exactly what I was expecting. And indeed, my empire is starting to take on a little bit of an odd shape here, because we got ourselves a lovely little heartland over in the east here, next to Liu Bei, who is now blue, and thus officially my best friend, which is just adorable, and then we've got Tao Ying down south. They're pretty chill with me as well. And they better be chill with me. Because if they stop being chill with me, I'll stop selling them the food that they need to not die. And speaking of Liu Bei, he's just naffed off into the middle of Han territory. Which he can actually take out very, very easily indeed using his unity meter. So, good luck with that. Honestly, that's cool. Me and you are probably going to be best friends the rest of the game. So if you just want to go around mopping up territory in the west, you go right ahead. But the real drama was up north, beyond the Yellow River, because I was always a bit suspicious of Yan Shao. But then basically, he just came down, I think he was planning to attack Cao Cao, but then he got distracted and beat up Lu Bu instead. So yeah, Lu Bu's been sent packing, though I don't know where he's going, because both him and Yan Shu seem to be actually rushing west right now, directly towards Liu Bei. So that'll be interesting to see how that one shakes out. And speaking of Yan Shao, yeah, those shadows means he's run out of military supply, so he's now fleeing back to friendly territory to restock. And my best friend Liu Dai, the faction my wife came from, he actually managed to seize the former imperial capital of Luo Yang, which is just beautiful. Because that just means actually, yeah, these guys are actually pretty chill with me. These guys are chill with me. These guys are chill with me. My borders are pretty secure. I was scared of Yan Shao, but actually he seems to be pretty chill. And now I'm more concerned about Gongsun Zhang up north, who's actually declared war on me. For reasons I'm not 100% sure about. In fact, you know what, let's start off by figuring out what his deal is right now. So he is a born soldier, brave may attack superior forces, is not allowed to retreat from battle unless there's a friendly city nearby. That's interesting. And yeah, focuses all resources on maintaining the biggest possible army at all times. So actually, it looks to me like he's got one hell of a big amount of territory. In fact, he might actually have more land on him than Yan Shao does. If he just eats Yan Shao... I'm going to be in a lot of trouble, actually. Yan Shao might turn out to be my best friend, not my enemy. Because Gong Sun Zan, I'm actually suddenly a lot more scared of. As for why he hates me, no particular reason to be honest. He's currently at war with me, so, you know, obviously. But other than that, it's just that we're a strategic threat. But then, so's Yan Shao. Why attack me, not Yan Shao? Maybe he thinks I'm weaker because I have less armies or something. But, yeah, for the moment at least... He's some distance away, and I am deploying spies to keep an eye on him, so uh, he's not my primary concern for the moment. My primary concern is indeed uh, Cao Cao. Cao Cao needs to go down, because I've learned two things about Cao Cao. Number one, his armies are massively out of position, way down south at the minute. It's going to take him a long time to mobilise back up north, because yeah, his empire is a weird shape right now. It's yeah, this sticky uppy bit over here, where most of his food is located. Meanwhile, most of his armies are down here instead. So we can actually pick off all of this immediately. And that food thing is very important, because Cao Cao already barely has enough food. So I've got a plan if we just use this rather convenient white border marker right here. If I basically just take over these territories up to this line right here, Yangzhou, and then basically I try and make peace with him, he might be furious about that, but... If I've got all of his food, he's going to start starving to death almost immediately. I can basically force him into a peace by offering him food to make him shut up. Now that's dangerous, because using his manipulation abilities, he can basically force other factions to declare war on me. But, that's so much food, I can't turn it down. Now, my army is still needing a little bit of time to relax, especially, yeah, my champion needs a couple of turns to recover from a wound he received in battle. And it's going to be winter next turn. So uh, I'd say, actually, we don't attack until spring. But then I've got myself a battle plan. I think I know what I want to do. And in the meantime, I'm going to lose a trade route with Cao Cao when I start a war with him. So I'm going to need to make some money from elsewhere to offset that. And I think I know where. See, I'm floating a lot of food right now. So how about we just go through the diplomacy screen looking for characters who are... There we go... Liu Bei, who is now actually on minus nine food, which is a bit of a disaster for him. Right, you, I'm willing to sell you some food. 
Oh, yeah, look at that. He values food very highly. And I love how clever it is, because, yeah, he actually is on minus food right now. So right up to 9 or 10 food, he absolutely loves food. Beyond that, he starts valuing it a lot less, which is a really, really cool system. I do like that. So I can sell him up to 10 food, and he really, really wants that. I'm not going to sell him all of that much, because, yeah, I might want to sell food to someone else. But I'll sell you five. How much are you willing to give me for five? Because I'm going to guess it's quite a bit. Actually, it's surprisingly not that much. Only 358 turn for 5 food. Okay. If I actually go down to, yeah, 322, but ask for a bit up front as well, please. In fact, that's weird. He's willing to pay just 700 up front. That's another 2 turns worth. Okay. Well, I know for a fact because we're friends, he's sitting on a big pile of money. Maybe he's more willing to actually hand over money up front than he is to hand it over time. Here we go. He'll hand over, yeah, about 2,000, 2,200 immediately. So not that much, but that 700 is still a really nice benefit on top. This seems like a pretty good balance to me. So yeah, 1,100 up front and then 2,900 over the next 10 turns for five food. Yep, that'll do. And that sorts out not all of his food problems, but at least some of them. Gonsun Zhang is also lacking in food, but he can go screw himself. And here we go. Dong Min actually is very poor in food, but he also hates me, so he might be willing to pay less. Oh yeah, look at that. He's willing to pay a lot less for the food. He doesn't care about that. But for just one food, actually that's plus 1.7, I might be willing to sell you one food just for a big old pile of money. That's one food for 54 a turn. You know what? I'll do it, just because he'll actually like me for that. Slowly, 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 that will just stop him hating me, making it less likely he'll attack me. And Liu Bao down south, if I'm just in range of, not as much to do with him yet, he's another one of the governors. Uh, yeah, he'll actually pay over 100 gold a turn for each food, 300 total. So, uh, that's good, we'll do that as well. There we go, that should really have shored up the economy. This is why just seizing as much food as you can as quickly as possible is so damn good. Ah yes, and Peng Cheng. Now this place has actually been repaired up, we can decide what we're really going to do with it. Because, of course, this place has got farmland. So, uh, we don't really want all of this commerce business. We actually want to get rid of some of that in order to actually get down the government support buildings. Which of these is the best, however? Because uh, this place gets me trade influence, which is good. This place gets me bonus income from commerce, which is not so good because there's barely any of that. So, uh, that... We will demolish. Next turn, we'll get the government support buildings up to actually start getting this farm mass producing food. And as it's super cheap, yeah, just keep these public schools being upgraded. Uh, public order up, public growth up, peasantry up, all good stuff. Dong Lai as well, you can actually have yourselves... You've actually got yourselves, yeah, multiple trade buildings here. I'm not sure that really helps us out much, to be honest. Ah, but because this place is literally on the water, I can't demolish that harbour. I'm just stuck with that. And if we're stuck with that, we may as well actually have a dock market too. Fine, Dong Lai's doing all right in that case. In which case, let's just get this place towards producing a decent volume of trade. So yeah, we'll go down this route towards the Grand Trading Harbour in the long run. Because yeah, that's the most amount you can make from commerce, together with boost from commerce income. Mix that together with this once that's fully upgraded. Yeah, this place will actually make a good amount of money, so get working on that too. Now, time to see what happens next, because I'm very interested with what the hell's going to happen in the West here, and... And uh, who are you trying to invite into the coalition now? Look, you've tried this before. He never says yes. And once more, Liu Bei's armies are moving west right now. Though possibly that one might be moving to attack Gon Sun Zhang. That's possible. And there we go. I've got visibility of Gon Sun Zhang. That was my spy getting embedded over there. So this is good. I'm starting to gain visibility as to what's going on over there. And speaking of which, Tao Ying is attacking the Yellow Turbans. No problem whatsoever. There must be a rebellion nearby. Oh, we have got spectacularly good news, though. I've actually got a double agent general in their faction right now. So he's currently actually leading an army over in Bohai right at this moment. Right, hang on, where are you? Ah, he's literally just been recruited inside the city of Bohai. Possibly because Yan Xiao is getting a bit concerned about Gong Sun Zhang, who is causing a lot of problems and seems to have eaten an awful lot of territory. So right now he's weak. 
for the time being, but that does give me really good visibility of what's going on around here. And as this person's a general, I've now got even more flipping options. My undercover network's building up nicely, so yeah, if I wanted to, I could start running interference immediately, so diminishing counter-spying efforts and increasing my spy's personal cover. Very, very nice indeed. So basically trading this currency, which is my general undercover network that all spies are contributing to, and instead boosting the cover of this particular spy. So basically making his life easier in the long run. But as a general, a giant pile of new stuff becomes available to him. So uh, here we go. Deny military supplies. So hinder replenishment of units if I actually want to screw over his army. I can infiltrate an army, which I assume means an army that's not this one. So yeah, at this point I can start getting visibility of all of Yan Shao's army, I'm guessing. Instead I can push to be taken off army duty and into administrator duties. So at that point I can start making commanders maybe even flip to my side. Beautiful. Poisoning military provisions, so inflicting casualties upon its units. Oh, that old Rome 2 chestnut is back. Lovely. Increased chance of being ambushed and forced night battles, or dispatch false marching orders to an army, thereby diminishing its range, causing troops to be fatigued in battle. Fine. So we can really screw over the army this guy's leading if need be. So between this army here and this guy over here trying to infiltrate Gonson Zhang's faction, we should have some really good visibility of all of this territory. If Gon Sun Sang tries to move against me, I should see it coming. But I'm increasingly suspicious. Yeah, it's possible some of Liu Bei's armies might be planning to actually move against Gon Sun Sang. Though alternatively, they may just be getting onto the river to go and reinforce over here. Because at this point, they've got three full stack armies. They are doing really nicely. In fact, I'm not quite sure how they're affording these armies. I know he's actually got a massive stockpile of money. Possibly he's just running a massive deficit right now. And here we go in Peng Chen. This is what we wanted right here. We need to actually, yes, boost the food production. Get that underway as fast as possible. Ultimately up to 150%. Love it. And I've also got the money to justify, yeah, boosting this small city up to a normal size level 5 city. Gonna cost a bit, gonna take a bit of time, but that opens up a new building slot. So... I feel like that's the right thing to do right there. Get it done. Liu Bei is being really optimistic here. He wants to invite Yun Shao into the coalition. Yun Shao is not going to say yes because he hates going into existing coalitions. I mean, uh, I wouldn't mind having him as part of it, to be honest. He has proved reliable. He has proved very reliable. So uh, I could accept that. But because I'm not the one that negotiated the deal, he's not going to say yes. I mean, I will accept, because sure, we'll give him the option to, but yeah, Yun Shao obviously rejects that. If I were to negotiate that deal, however, I might be able to bribe him into doing it, but it's very unlikely and it will be very expensive. And Yan Shu is asking for military access and is willing to actually pay for it. Now that's interesting, because uh, I believe he's actually at war with people I'd rather he wasn't at war with. In particular, yeah, there we go. He's at war with Liu Dai. I don't want him to be able to attack Liu Dai, to be perfectly honest, because the more territory Liu Dai has, the more territory that's in the hands of a friend, and the more territory where I've got the factionaire in my court. So I'm not really keen on that. Sorry, that's a no. And here we go. It is spring. It is beautiful. And that means, hang on, I think also my hero should be... Yes, my hero is now back up to full strength, uninjured, raring for battle. Marvellous. Welcome back. This army is also ready to go right over here. He can't actually make it to this city immediately. Do I want him to make it to this city immediately? The thing is, okay, here's my battle plan. Let's talk about the war against Cao Cao. My main army is going to swing through these territories and get as far south as it can as quickly as possible. The reason for that is, these guys are not actually undefended. As we've discussed before, subregions have surprisingly large garrisons, but... Farms don't have walls, so I can engage them in a pitch battle in the open field, which works to my advantage as I'll have the superior army, but I'm still going to take casualties while I'm doing it. My force can just make it to this livestock farm immediately and basically attack them straight away, if I'm willing to accept, yeah, a slightly damaged bunch of cavalry. Alternatively, I could actually begin in summer. There's no particular reason to favour one way or the other, to be honest. But if I begin the war, and this place isn't under siege, this person could just recruit a whole bunch of new troops in a hurry. Oh, and boo, Yanshu has actually taken back Lu Yang. Boo, boo, I say. So sadly, that is back in his possession, understandably. And Lu Bu has been seen off. I'm not sure where he's naffed off to. So 
Tragically, yeah, Liu Dai has been denied. That is a shame. Although as Liu Bei is now right here, I'm kind of curious whether Liu Bei would be up for a joint war against Yan Shu. No, I don't want to do that right now. I'm about to begin the war with Cao Cao. But as Liu Bei now has this trade port, he would love to get these cities over here. And I would love to have Liu Bei on this border because that would be much safer than having Yan Shu there. Ah, uh, tragedy maybe not. Liu Bei does actually have, yeah, a decent relationship with Yan Shu and military access too. So that probably isn't going to work out. And just keep upgrading this here farmland. More and more and more food, please. That is so cheap to do and so worth doing. Though actually, hang on. This place is... Ah, this place is only actually level 3. Hang on, uh, let's get that up to level 4, actually. I know it's going to take a while, it's a bit more expensive, but... Yeah, I'd rather this place had walls, just for safety. I've also lost sight of one of Cao Cao's armies. He was over here somewhere. He's gone. Possibly heading back north, but with my visibility of the trade routes in this road here, I know he's not actually back at this city yet, but he might be heading in that direction. We'll have to see how far I can push this war before I actually have to make peace, because uh, I don't know how much I'm going to want to take on Cao Cao. Because by the time I actually make it down to, say, Yang Zhao over here, my army's going to be battered from taking on all of these farm garrisons. I don't know if I'm going to be in a position to push much further than that. At that point, I may just need to fling food at him to get him to make peace with me. While I'm sitting on some money, though, yeah, just keep the magistrate upgrading over in Yingshun right there. I need the prestige. Because, for me, prestige comes in pretty slowly. This is why, yeah, right now I'm not even a Marquis yet. And I'm still a little bit of a distance away from doing that. Other factions find it much easier to do. Because, say, Liu Bei might actually achieve it before me. Even though his empire is tiny next to mine. Because his meter at the top there, the equivalent of my trade monopoly, unity for him, that gives him prestige as he fills it up. So, he can actually get up to higher ranks on a fairly small empire. Oh, and it is reform time. I love reform time because it means you get to go into the reform tree. And the reform tree is great. And I think I might just have done enough on the blue side of the reform tree. I need to pay attention to the rest of it too. For example, I can't get my farms up to level 4 until I actually take this over here. Agricultural tax relief. And that also gets me peasant band spearmen. Not a bad unit at all for anti-cavalry. Oh, but here's interesting. Over on the yellow branches... Uh, Look over here, we've got ourselves an administrator position. Now, administrators are really powerful, and that would mean I can actually put an administrator over in Yin Shan. That would make a load of flippin' money right there. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna get that done immediately. Get that in play. We've now actually got ourselves an extra administrator position. Let's get that done. See how over in my court, brand new position is available. Love it. So next turn, we can actually get an administrator in Taishan. It's extra revenue, it'll pay for itself many times over. And a bit of extra garrison, just for safety, because I really, really do not trust Gon Sun Zhang. And Liu Bei's armies continue sailing west. There is a third one as well, so he is just flinging everything he's got over there. And hello, we've got ourselves... Uh, Sun Zhang wants to potentially have a non-aggression pact. He'll also pay me 600 gold, but he wants strategies of the warring states. No, I like that. It's a good book. You're not having anything that gives me abilities. You know what? Let's have a nice chat about this. How do we get a non-aggression pact going without you being a dick about anything else? He's rich in money and he's rich in food. So unfortunately, there's not much I can really bribe him with. Though on the other hand, he's miles away from me. I'm not even going to worry about it yet. I'm just going to say no and we'll figure it out later. Still no sign of Cao Cao's army, but Cao Cao himself and his most experienced generals and troops are still located uh, way down south. It's go time. It's summer. My armies are at full strength. It's time to flip and do this. Before we go in, however, let's just make sure we know who we want to be commander of this army. So as commander versus just being present, what do you offer me, Wang Zhu? Plus 10 morale when defending, which we probably will be because we'll wait for them to attack us. A melee armor piercing damage, but he does that whether or not he's commander. Ah, but Mi Heng, the superstitious genius, he's actually got himself patience right here. Increases rate of wall and settlement damage during sieges. Yeah, you know what? You, you get to be commander. And also, don't forget to give him the book. There we go. Congratulations, you've now got the book. 
Also, he's just using a really, really basic garment right now. And, uh, yeah, a much better garment is in possession of Shi Yi. Shi Yi shouldn't have that. Shi Yi's just being... I don't even know what Shi Yi's doing. I think he's doing an assignment right now. Hang on, Shi Yi, hand it over. Right, there we go. He's had that taken away from him. And you probably won't be able to have it immediately. Yeah, it'll actually return to being available in a single turn. So next turn, we can give him the plus nine cunning gown, which is pretty damn good. Right, that's everything we need there. You, my good man... Get in there. We are formally declaring war against Sao Sao. In we go. Don't bother actually attacking just yet. We're going to continue the siege. They'll come to us in a couple of turns, so that'll be autumn. That's absolutely fine. I guess you may as well get a sapping point ready to go, just so we've got an easier time coming in when the time is right. Ah, yes, and as the game is reminding me, I've got that new administrator position. I don't actually have anyone ready to fill it right now. Ah, apart from Kan Cheng, the guy who was previously a tax collector. If I were to make you administrator, what would that actually do? So, that would actually give me not much, to be honest. He's not a great administrator. So yeah, 15% income from all sources. It's not great. It's not great at all. Would anyone else do better? Because me hang over there would also boost income from all sources by another 10%. Suggesting a strategist might actually be the best bet here because trade is color coded blue, strategists are color coded blue. It feels like strategists are the things I'm going to be wanting here. Let's see if any of the new people that have shown up actually have any really, really good skills as an administrator. No, there's a few dangerous ones, in fact, like this guy, if he's administrator, increased ambition to gain independence. So uh, he's not great. He's not great at all. Yeah, it just feels like Kan Cheng is not going to be doing a good job. The benefit that he actually personally provides is 10% construction cost, 1k population growth. But a skilled strategist can double the population growth, even more income, reserves up, construction cost still at 6%. You know what? I'm actually going to hire someone new for this. Sorry, Kan, you're kind of not very good, to be honest. So Sai Yan over here is not exactly spectacular, but she's a level 3 strategist, so welcome aboard, I suppose. You have been recruited, and you are going to be moved straight into that position for... Ah, that's kind of unfortunate, actually. You didn't actually provide the benefit I was hoping for. That you do provide a major population growth. Reserves up is very, very nice indeed. Construction cost still 5%. Screw it. Five food is actually really valuable. In fact, actually, you know what? Five food is probably worth more than an extra 10 percentage points of commerce anyway. Yeah, congratulations. You are now going to be that commander. Lovely. And you're going to be sent over to Taishan. Have fun. And there we go. She's just arrived with her garrison, which mysteriously doesn't need to grow. It's just sort of there, which is nice. So now there's an extra two arch units guarding that place. Yeah, reserves will now go up from 35 max to 50 max, because she does actually provide plus 15 right there. So yeah, basically those fill up as long as there's food in the empire, but if food runs out or you're running a food deficit, then all cities start draining their reserves. When those run out, then you're in trouble. Then you're in a lot of trouble, because reserves also determine how long you can hold out in a siege. So uh, this is another part of my master plan, by the way. You see, if I just swing in over here and take away Sao Sao's food... Uh, he actually won't be able to feed any of his cities anymore. Their reserves will start draining, and potentially, he could be in an awful lot of trouble. Speaking of which, it's time to go and help myself to the first farm. A livestock farm on this occasion, which should have... Uh, how's the garrison there? I mean, it's got a garrison. Looks like, what is that, six units of archers? Other than that, yeah, basically spears and pole arms. We can handle that. Especially as rather conveniently, there's not one single unit with a shield there. So Kong Rong's crossbow line can just tear these guys apart. Though before we move in, of course, one thing I do want to double check here. Who should be the commander of this army? Because up to now, we've always just assumed it should be Kong Rong. But the commander gets more XP. So potentially, I might want to let my wife command so she actually levels up a bit faster. Kong Rong is going to pass on some good benefits though. 10% ranged firing rate, that's really damn nice. Together with the crucial 25% campaign movement range, but I'm not moving right now. In fact, that's literally it. All he's passing on at the minute is, uh, yeah, ranged firing rate. Now, I don't want to move over Zhen Yang right now, but he does have the rather useful minus 50% attrition for military supply shortage. So, if I were to run out of supplies, unlikely to happen with Kong Rong present, but... If I were to run out of supplies, uh, then as a result of that, moving him into command could be very, very good. 
And right now, Liu Hu Min is passing on nothing at all. So I think we'll just leave everyone as they are for the time being. Kong Rong can stay in command because him leveling up even more is not a bad thing. They will catch up sooner or later. In which case, we're not waiting. We're just moving straight in. Let's go and murder them. Because bear in mind, garrisons tend to be large, but they also tend to be made up of a limited number of troops. So on this occasion, plenty of anti-cavalry, plenty of archers, literally no shields, literally no cavalry of their own. So as a result of that, set yourself up correctly, you can actually cut through them surprisingly effectively. So what I'm going to do first up is take every single unit that I possess in possession of a shield. And I'm going to use them to form up my front line. Because this front line is going to be, yeah, about 50% resistant to any arrow fire that gets put on them. Because they can just put their shields up and defend themselves. The relatively vulnerable G militia, however, they'll actually hang at the back. They can be reserves, but we probably won't be needing them. There we go. One main command group over here. I'm going to keep my cavalry loose and on the flanks, however. Because they can do a very good job picking off all those archers. Now, begin the battle. Let's see what we're looking at here. And, uh, yes indeed, my trebuchet gets to start firing immediately. And even though these guys are on the defensive, they're going to come and try and take me out regardless, because otherwise I'll just keep hitting them with the trebuchet forever. And the trebuchet can fire 19 times, which is just beautiful. So here we go. We've got a shot at these guys right here. Let's just basically start putting some fire down on them. That should be coming in momentarily. Where's the first rock, by the way? Come on. Whenever you're flipping ready, whenever you're ready, it's going to be beautiful. And in it comes. Oh, yeah. That's some good dead people. Right, let's not worry about that for the time being. Let's worry about the cavalry, who can very easily take some of these hits. They're actually, yeah, 85% resistant to missiles. So as a result of that, that's going to start dividing his line. He's going to have no choice but to send some spears to try and intercept my cavalry, because otherwise my cavalry can basically just tie up his line. And these cavalry, I look at that. We've lost four horses so far. All the fire I'm under, I've lost four horses. And now he's got to make a choice. He can either turn back and deal with my cavalry, or his entire archer line is just going to collapse in no time at all. And now I am going to start firing on him. Beautiful. So these guys are going to start seeing off you. These guys do not like being hit by archers. Here we go. This is going very, very nicely indeed. Yeah, this garrison is not in good shape at all. They're not happy. And some of the garrison has turned back to go and deal with the cavalry. So that means that now what's actually approaching the front line is even weaker. We can concentrate fire on the units that are approaching. They're going to be torn to shreds. They don't like this one little bit. You guys get over here. You guys get over here. Yeah, there we go. This is going to be a very, very nice, easy victory right here. In you go. Slam into them. Job is pretty much done. I'm not sure they're even going to make it to the front line. They just seem to be absolutely screwed right now. You guys, by the way, uh, stop whatever you're doing. Just fire on whoever you feel like right now. It doesn't really matter. Have they managed to get a single unit up to our front line? I'm not sure they have. I think they're really struggling here. They are really flipping struggling. Break these horses off. Go and attack that over there. Some of the G militia have tried to handle this. But at this point, yeah. The final archers are going down. Oh, look at that concentrated fire. Right there. So much concentrated fire. Love it. Have you even got involved yet? Hang on. I'm actually going to send forward Kong Rong. Because bear in mind, he's now got a magic bow. Which basically just pretty much makes him mobile artillery. Because this bow is crazy good. Like, really ridiculous good skirmish mode off bow on please so he's now going to basically just start drawing his bow and we're barely even going to see it over the amount of firepower here but it's really powerful all right you know what screw it we're going to send him forward to have some fun though i think we might be too late yep everything is just breaking and no 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 hang on kong wrong you're getting your moment in the sun all right we're just going to show how powerful this bow is because this bow is slightly ridiculous in comes a shot, and they just went down from, yeah, 184 men to 174. Hang on, how many was that? I think that one did less damage on that occasion, but he's just getting ready to fire his bow. 168. It is slightly ridiculous. It's basically mobile artillery. He's basically just charging in and murdering everyone he wants. So, yeah, screw it. Kong Rong's just getting involved. He's just going in. He doesn't use his sword very much, but when he does, he kicks a lot of ass. 
So, nice easy one right there. We literally lost 25 men. Good. That went very, very well indeed. That garrison was well set up to be taken apart if you know what you're doing. So, just occupy this place, of course. Move straight in. This is now my livestock farm. Lovely. And what else we got here? Ah, my wife just leveled up. Not sure what she did there, but she did. So, that's good. I'm just going to give her plus 8 authority together with, yeah, 50% line of sight. That's not bad, but it also opens up the way to my favourite commander upgrade. Plus 100% ranged block chance. Basically, if you're under fire, she can just say, Hey, frontline, you're not under fire anymore. You're now completely resistant to missiles for 30 seconds. It's really damn good. So we're going to move her in that direction. Ooh, we also just picked up a Marshal G. Plus 12 expertise, rank silver. Did we get that out of the farm? I'm not sure whether we got that at the beginning of the turn or whether we just got that out of the farm. But that's really nice. That's very powerful. Sadly, my champion does not want that. It's not a weapon he uses. I'm guessing because it gives expertise, that means it's a weapon for vanguards. Actually, no. Commanders are allowed to use it. Fascinating. Ah, I see. So different characters can actually have different types of units. So Wang Zhu here, for example, can have twin axes, axes, twin maces, twin swords, and swords. So I could actually give that to my wife right now. Though actually, could Kong Rong have it himself? No, Kong Rong can't have it, boo. Kong Rong can only have a single basic sword or a bow as an accessory. But yeah, I could give that to my wife. So yeah, champions can only have 200 axes, 200 maces, pole arms or staves. Basically, they can only use big long things. Gotcha. So my wife's current sword is 30 melee attack rate, together with a bit of melee damage, 300 melee damage armor piercing, compared to... Uh, Okay, so basically that's gonna... Wow, that's very nice indeed. So, you can have that. Congratulations. Happy anniversary, darling. And this battle burns the rest of my movement points. Lovely. So I can't do anything else this turn, but I should easily be able to make it to the next livestock farm down the road next time. And this place was actually level four. That's actually pretty big. And what about this one? Can we actually tell how big this is? I don't know, but a garrison that size, I'm guessing actually, wait... Is that the army we just fought? I think that's the army we just fought again. So good. We know we can do well there. Possibly we will be able to take Yang Zhao. And with the money we made in battle, just keep the schools getting upgraded. More and more schools. Those do seem really damn powerful. Beautiful. We can actually afford them, yeah. Over in Beihai and in Dong. So that's plenty of population, plenty of money. Though then again, I do need to be careful. Because as population rises, there are increasing public order penalties as you get closer to the population cap. Which I suppose is very much like the squalor system back in the original Rome Total War. So yeah, you've got to make sure you've got something to offset that squalor. And for me, those schools do a very good job. So they boost the population and boost the amount of money you're making without actually screwing you over in terms of squalor. Or rather counteracting the squalor at the same time. Now, Huang An Bao right here will probably not come and attack me this turn. I think she's got one more turn of supply. So she'll probably be waiting until autumn or harvest for her to actually come out here. And, uh, hello. Liu Bei wants me to actually attack the Han. Okay. Unsurprising, to be honest. And they'll actually pay me for that. Will that actually make me dishonorable? Because... I think I did actually make peace with them not long ago. Well, the game's not giving me a big you're about to become dishonorable flag, so... You know what? Why not? There's a few hand territories floating around over here somewhere or another. I can just go and mop them up in time. Yeah, you know what? If you're willing to pay for it, I will totally go to war with the hand. Let's do this. Ah, no, no, no. The game is giving me that precise warning. This is actually an act of treachery. So... Hmm. If I say no... I'm so sorry, Lu Bei. I am so sorry. But this doesn't break our coalition. Coalitions are non-binding. They're not military alliances. He'll still go to war, though. He's just asking me if I'm willing to join in. And uh, honestly, I'm kind of busy at the minute. So I'm so sorry about this. But I kind of can't. Me and him are still best friends, though. This doesn't mean we're enemies or anything. Our coalition's fine, we're still friends, we just don't feel like going into the same war on this occasion. And we have an event here, Remain Hungry. A swordsman in your realm is known to be unbeatable, and you've enjoyed many evenings watching him defeat challenges in fighting matches. However, one evening he is challenged by a peasant armed with a simple homemade bamboo staff in place of a sword. The warrior scoffs, but the peasant's fighting style is unknown to him, and he is soon laid low by the deft movement of the staff. You contemplate this and conclude that flexibility is the greatest weapon against chaos, and it is time you studied a new skill. So I've given myself a brand new book there, Discourses of the States. 
So plus six authority, plus six satisfaction, minus five corruption faction wide, but only if the character is prime minister, heir or faction leader. Right, so I think this means I know what I need to do right now. You see, faction heir is a position that's open to me because I have family. And my family is Liu Humin. The problem is, because she's so flipping beautiful, she's actually going to cause minus five satisfaction to literally everyone else in the Empire, because they're all super jealous of me or her. Or... I'm not sure why her being beautiful causes dissatisfaction, but it just does. Although in all fairness, actually, there's plus five satisfaction as well, so that does offset that. And just in case Kong Rong were to die unexpectedly, it's probably better I do name her faction heir for the time being. At least till we start having children, then I can pick one of them. So right now she's holding a clay pig, which was probably not her favourite Christmas present that year. But now we have got ourselves Discourses of the States. Beautiful. So that's more authority for you. Lovely. In fact, is that not quite up to 100, but almost there. So, so damn close. In fact, right now I've got two really, really damn good ancillaries I'm not actually using for anything. So, uh, here we go. Spy Master. Did you show up this turn? Because I swear I don't remember you being there before. Though then again, ooh, he's a really good Spy Master. So, plus six to cunning, counter espionage as an assignment, and plus 15 undercover network cost for enemy spies. So, spies cannot work anywhere near as effectively inside my empire. Alternatively, plus 15% income from industry. That's really nice. That's really, really damn nice. Right. You, right now, you've actually got yourself a farmer. Not exactly spectacular, to be honest. In fact, I should give that to someone who's administering a commandery, which is actually producing food. Instead, if you're about to become my faction heir, then I need to give you something very, very good indeed. So, uh, which one of these would I rather give to... Hang on, Kong Rong's already got himself the scholar. That's plus four cunning and character experience up across the entire empire. That's really nice. So, uh, you... Uh, Ooh, would I rather you were a bit more cunning and we were safer from spies, or... No, I'm going to give you the Forge Master. 15% income from industry faction-wide. That's a lot of money, but then again, is it that much money? It's probably not actually that much money. No, Spy Master. The Spy Master's going to travel around with you. You've now got yourself... Oh yeah, you've got some good equipment right here. Just check everyone, by the way. Yeah, no one's read Satisfaction right now. So no one's going to, like, immediately revolt because I name her Faction Heir. So, uh, welcome aboard, Liu Humin. You are now going to be our new Faction Heir. And even better, that she gives us one additional assignment, too. Very, very nice indeed. So, yeah, Guao Si is currently doing that business with food production. And Shi Yi is currently doing an education program over in Taishan. Meaning you, you now... Ooh, hello... You could potentially do industrial exploitation over in Dong. That'd be good. Yeah, plus 30% industry from Dong right there. Get on with that immediate. Where are you? No, why are you doing that in Taishan? Why would you be doing that in Taishan? Don't do that in Taishan. I'm not even sure why you're in Taishan right now. That's not your commandery or anything. There we go. That's better. Now he's going to be getting on with that in Dong. He'll start doing that next turn. Now that, that's good stuff. And no one seems too annoyed by that. And speaking of Guangxi earlier, he's just leveled up. So just keep you getting better and better, please. May as well give him reach. One day or another, we might actually need to call on him to fight. And while we're doing a switchy roundy, yes, me hang. Get yourself a really nice bit of armor on. Oh, you look fantastic right there. And he's over 100 cunning. Love it. And don't forget Sai Yan. So... Over in Taishan, that place is producing a tiny amount of food, which is purely because that's a special ability she produces. So therefore, if I were to give her the farmer, though the farmer's not available right this second, that would boost that amount of food. But there's also, ooh, there's also multiple traders. Though traders are only plus two cunning, they're not spectacular to be honest. Yeah, I'll actually wait for the farmer to show up next turn. And also, here's a feather fan, just so you can stay cool while you're doing all the administration business. And oh flip, we finally got what I've been wanting for so long. An actual vanguard just showed up. Right, I love vanguards, but they seem to be in hot demand. The AI seems to agree with me, because you never see them show up. They're just never bloody here. So... Please tell me you're actually a good vanguard, because I really want to hire you. Now, there's a possibility he might be a spy from Yan Shao. That's possible, but Yan Shao seems pretty chill, so 
I'm willing to overlook that as a possibility. His instinct is fine if not spectacular, stats overall look reasonable, he does start off with, yeah, Flames of the Phoenix, a massive melee splash attack, so uh, very useful indeed if he's getting involved in the front line, which is a vanguard he should be, plus two to instinct right there, no desire for higher officers, that's rather useful, humbleness never hurts, and he's also beautiful, which is good for him because that is plus five satisfaction. I mean, I'd prefer it if he had abilities that boosted his instinct a bit more, but his base instinct does seem to be reasonable enough, to be honest. Congratulations, you are being hired. Welcome aboard. Sadly, I can't recruit him right now, but I will be bringing him into my secondary army when I'm able to. Or alternatively, I could bring him into my primary army because... Uh, yeah, Zheng Yan could go join the secondary army because my wife is starting to get terrifyingly good at fighting. She's got that really, really nice pole axe thing. So actually, she might do all right. But then again, her resolve is fairly low. She's not got much health. Yeah, 47,000 health for my champion versus 36,000 for her. But he's doing 200 damage and 800 armor piercing. She's doing 800 base and 800 armor piercing. So actually, she's really, really damn good in that regard. She's not got as good armor, however. Yeah, her armor's much lower. So as a result of that, you know what? She'll do all right. When the option presents itself, I'm putting my wife onto the front line for a duel because I think she'll actually do really well. And there we go. South South City has now run out of supplies. Keep going. They'll be attacking me later this harvest season. There's also the forces of Yun Shao here. Now, Yun Shao is at war with Cao Cao. Me and him have got no alliance with each other whatsoever. But as we're both at war with the same person, I think we established previously that means he's not going to be coming to help out. But... We'll see, maybe he'll pleasantly surprise me. Also, here's something fun. People who don't get on do actually mind it, even if they're in cities on unrelated business to each other. So, right now, Kan Cheng is over in Dong, taking care of the assignment. Meanwhile, Sun Shao is there, being the actual administrator. And because they hate each other, yeah, there is actually disharmony going on. Ah, problems. I've lost visibility of Cao Cao's armies because I'm not trading with him anymore. I've still got visibility of Sun Jan, but that is... Uh, is that tea? That might be the tea coming from over there. Yeah, there's a tea house there. So the tea is going along this journey to make its way to me. It goes over to this trade port and then gets sent by sea over to me. So I still don't know why I'm allowed to trade with this guy, but not with Yan Shu. That's just weird. Speaking of which, never mind. He's actually willing to trade with me at this point. Marvellous. Well, I'm going to be wanting some money for that, actually. Let's just make some money here. Oh, 1,500 gold up front, and I get to start making 800 gold a turn off that. Oh, you are very welcome indeed. And that's it. My trade routes are now actually full up. Lovely. So we're trading with Liu Dai, we're trading with Yan Shu, we're trading with Sun Jian, and we're trading with Liu Bei. Spot on. Still, next up's the easy one here. This army is basically straight back up to full strength. Straight over to livestock farm number two. Exactly the same as what we've just seen. We're going to do again. Yep, exactly the same again. We lost our handful of men. I think one unit managed to make it to our front line momentarily. But for the most part, giant piles of kills on my ranged units. Giant piles of kills over here on these cavalry. Ridiculous volumes of kills, in fact. Absolutely love it. Oh, flip, I didn't even realize I was that close. I have officially become a Marquis. I am up to the next level here. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. And that gives me more administrators, more trade deals, more assignments, and more spies. I love spies. Spies are great. And for the first time, the ability to change the tax rate. So if I want to, yes, I can actually accept public order down across the entire empire in return for more tax and even more food. So that's a big old pile of food, but bit on the dangerous side. Let's not rush into that just yet. Oh, and good old Kong Rong has leveled up again. And, oh, fire arrows. Fire arrows and night battles. Yeah, we'll be doing that, thank you. That sounds just perfect. So the cavalry's taken a bit of a battering. Those guys will take some time to recover. The rest of the army is ready to move straight on. But I don't know where the armies of Cao Cao are anymore. They could be anywhere. 
And here we go. We do indeed have a bunch of new positions starting to show up too. So, what administrator, together with Grand Excellency and, ooh, Commander-in-Chief as well. Now, is this one of those roles where it doesn't really matter? Yeah, it doesn't really matter who's actually doing it as far as I can tell. So this is basically just a position of honour for somebody I happen to particularly like. And also someone I particularly trust, because this person, if they defect, can trigger a civil war. So... Keep it to people you really know and love. Now, Wang Zhu has been with me from the very beginning. Me and him are oath sworn. We are friends. We get on with each other. I see no reason why we wouldn't actually make him Grand Excellency for plus 15% income from all sources. Yes, we're going to be doing that. Sadly, Factionaire is a job all by itself, so uh, yeah, she's not allowed to do that. Only people who are floating around down here. Though I don't think this actually takes people away from their jobs. This is just basically an honorary title. And this one, yeah, gets recruitment costs down across the Empire. Very, very nice indeed. Do I trust anyone enough just yet, though? I'm not sure I do. Not quite yet, anyway. Now, the question is, where should my other administrator go? Because my administrator, yeah, could go all the way up here in Donglai... It's nice and out of the way, but they could boost food production significantly. I feel like I'd actually rather have them for safety over here in Yingshun. Because I feel like that's a bit of a weak link in the chain right now. And yeah, there are some big ass armies floating around right there. Here we go, we've got a 36 year old champion over here. Former bandit wants to go straight. Would produce two extra food if he's actually administering a commandery. And he's honest. So... I'd like to think we can trust this guy. And also he's from Zhang Yan. Right, that's why he's a bandit. He's literally come from the bandit king's court. But I see no reason why Zhang Yan would be spying on me. I think this guy's pretty trustworthy. So we're going to hire him purely to actually make him an administrator straight away. And that is, yeah, food production up, construction cost down. Not spectacular. And, ah, hang on. Is that a function of your stats, not your class? I suspect it is. You know what, as he's actually generating food production, I'm going to change my mind. He's actually going all the way up to... Uh, he's going to go to Donglai. He's going to produce food at Donglai. Congratulations, that's now your job. We're also up to a spectacular plus 30 surplus of food right now. And when food is plentiful, plus 15% income from peasantry. Flippin' love it. And yeah, I'll leave Commander-in-Chief empty for the time being. I need to find someone I'm absolutely certain I trust first. You may have also noticed Faction Council being mentioned, by the way. Yeah, this is basically people who've got senior government positions. If you invoke the council, they'll give you little missions to do. So I don't need those right now. I'm fairly on the busy side. But yeah, if you want some extra missions to get on with, if you want your campaign to have a bit more structure to it, you can just basically invoke the council until you get a mission you like. Also, Liu Bei's great adventure continues. He's now just naffing off south from his trade port and is heading towards, uh, I assume, this lumberyard over here. So... Good luck, you mad bastards. I mean, the city of Hidong was right here, but sure, whatever, just ignore that one. I guess maybe he was a bit scared of Lu Bu. I would be too. In fact, actually, good point. If I want to get this army filled up, I don't need to actually wait for this guy to take the city. I can actually start raising the army over here. In fact, I may as well, because then it can muster very nice and fast at this city. And I think I know what we want. We want ourselves our first ever vanguard. Get them on the field. Beautiful. Now, we need to get him set up correctly, and I believe we do have one very good horse in the Empire. So, up to this point, I've kind of given it to Zheng Yan, but he doesn't get that anymore. I'm very sorry. So, we're going to take your nice horse away from you, because you don't really need charge bonuses. This guy... This guy needs some charge bonuses. So next turn, he can have the special grey stallion. And for the time being, he can actually have the forge master. Because that's plus six instinct. So uh, that's useful. Actually, expertise is good too. That's melee evasion up. And yeah, this guy's job is to just charge into the front line and murder everything in front of him. He's great. He's got himself vengeance, enable scare, morale inside own territory, reach, a light reach, reach is a good ability. He's also starting off with flexibility, not so great, but then again, resolve, that's health, that's useful to a vanguard too. And he's also got a tiny bit of cunning, ooh, he gets to vanguard deploy with shock cavalry. Oh, that's really damn nice right there. So go on, I'll give him a bit more shock cavalry too. Why not? That's kind of his job. But other than that, that's a bit expensive. So actually, yeah, giving him frontline troops so we can actually lead a direct assault against the enemy. That's not too bad. So we'll get that underway. Those guys will, yeah, grow pretty quickly because of mustering rates. And that is going to slightly hurt my trade value, but it should be fine. So we will merge him into this army soon. 
Now, time to see if the garrison over in South South's capital is planning to march out or not. And uh, who do you want to invite into the coalition now? And who the hell is that? Why are we inviting her into the coalition? I don't think we want her in the coalition. Like, she's got like one city. No, no, she's not coming into the coalition. Leave her out. And Jun Shao wants to receive a pig. Right, a clay pig. The clay pig is total garbage, so... Honestly, I'm willing to sell it to him just to keep him sweet, really. He really wanted that pig, by the way. And here we go. She is indeed coming outside, and uh, we should absolutely destroy them. In fact, actually, the game is saying, yeah, we've got an 86% chance of capturing her. So, uh, we might want to have a look at her later. We might be able to recruit her into the faction. Though, we'll need to wait and see, because right now, yeah, we don't have good visibility of what her abilities actually are. Though... Uh, Cunning is reasonable, not spectacular. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. As for what's coming at me, yeah, overwhelmingly, it's archers. Five units of archers. So just use my own cavalry, we should be fine. Oh, this is just perfect for me. We've got a massive open field right here. And I've got trebuchets and crossbows. And they don't. Oh, that is, that is spot on right there. Right, get the horsemen ready to forward deploy. That's all absolutely fine. Everyone else, begin. Let's see what we got here. And yes, indeed, all we've got on the field in terms of generals is a strategist for the enemy. So we can't duel them, which is a shame, because Wang Zhu would have absolutely destroyed her. Right, forward deployed cavalry, let's just see what we've got here. Bear in mind, though, they can see my cavalry because there's no cover. There's a good chance they'll actually send their cavalry to intercept. So in which case, actually, that could be a bit of a problem. Because, um... I physically don't actually have any spears right now. So for taking out cavalry, I need to use my own cavalry or range. So that's going to be a little bit on the tricky side. Right, pull this cavalry back because it seems to have been, yes, yeah, spotted. Uh, I think my cavalry over on the far side, they haven't seen yet and it is currently hidden. So uh, I'll keep that in position for flanking purposes to take out all of these here archers. Still, here comes the first boulder right here, and... Oh, they didn't like that, they didn't like that one little bit. Right, so we're just starting to get visibility here. I can't quite see. Oh, I need to send something forward, so I've actually got visibility here. Can I actually hit the... I could potentially hit these horses. It's a bit of a dodgy shot. Yeah, you know what? Just put some fire straight onto the front line right here. There's a big group of them. This is a good spot. And it looks like those horses are going to go and try and hunt down mine, which is fine. These horses over here can start heading in this direction and getting behind these here archers. So just start moving them into position. I've only got one unit of crossbows, actually, and they're approaching from... I wouldn't call it a flank and... Oh, that was a lot of kills. That was a lot of kills right there. Well done. Right, spread out the swordsman here. I'm not worried, but we are going to take some casualties here. So there we go. We're starting to lay down some fire. But that is... Yeah, that's Sabre Cavalry. They've got shield. So they can shrug this off, as we know full well. And these archers are mostly inexperienced. These are not my best troops. Still, looks like these cav over here are going to have a good straight shot... Over onto this side. So they're opening fire, but these guys can just shrug that off. They do not care. We're getting a couple of light knocks in on that Sabre Cavalry, but that's... It's not doing much. My Sabre Cavalry could probably go in and win one-on-one, -on -one, which I don't really want them to do. I'd like them to start going around here and mopping up these here archers. So uh, be careful. And bear in mind, actually, my Assault Infantry can actually shrug off arrows. They do have shields. 50% dodge chance. So that's actually good. That's pretty good right there. And the spears look like they're being torn apart to me. My horses starting to do some good work around here. G Militia don't seem to be paying much attention to me. And right now they're getting confused. They don't know where they want to aim. So just to aim right over here. And oh, that's a lot of firepower. That's a lot of firepower right there. We're starting to chase these guys off nicely. Their cavalry want to come and get mine, which is unfortunate, but it was going to happen. I think my cavalry could win because theirs have already been softened up. So uh, let's just basically keep them busy while I'm just dealing with all of this. Because right now, yeah, every bit of dancing I do with my cavalry, it just keeps their troops away from my front line. Okay, I think it's time to actually charge at this point. Just get in there, start hitting their spearmen. Just get on top of them. We're ready to just actually take care of this, no problem at all. And in fact, you know what? Deploy my commander to just go and harass them. She won't duel because she's a strategist, but... 
Hello, what's wrong with you right now? This unit is- ah, that's just the I did break but now I'm fine button. Gotcha. Right, reinforcements coming in over here. This is pretty much all they've got left at this point. So my swordsmen are now throwing themselves right into the melee. They're not going to like that one little bit. These basic assault infantry can do a very, very competent job indeed. And yeah, right now, she is running out of health fast. She's only got 16,000 health left. This guy's got 42,000. So he's basically just going up to her and hitting her with a sword occasionally. There we go. She's not liking that. She's not liking that. She'll break sooner rather than later. In fact, I'm going to deploy my superstitious genius right into the rear of these spearmen. Not a great idea, to be honest, but it'll do the job. In fact, it's time to actually get my cavalry out of there now that these swordsmen have shown up. Because my cavalry can do a better job chasing off what's already fleeing. So you guys, get over there. I don't want anything making it back to the city, please. Get all of them dead. And she is fleeing. Let her go. We don't want her dead because I might want to recruit her. We'll see. And it looks to me like what's even left. We should have won by now, right? What's actually not broken on the field? There we go. There's that victory. Good, good, good. Before we end the battle, I've got cavalry. They don't. Let's just do a little bit of mopping up. Make my job as easy as possible in the city. All right. Job done. Plenty of kills there. Question is, uh, do we actually get her at this point? Because the game did say, overwhelming chance she would basically be captured. And there we go. She has indeed been captured. So... Can I actually choose to employ her right now? No, the character refuses to join the faction. So, capturing someone isn't enough to get them on board. They have to like you or like the faction or maybe like a friend of theirs is in your faction. So, it's not a guaranteed acquisition. But, I do have a choice of either releasing her for a big old pile of money or executing her. In which case, if she had something good, I'd actually get it. So, she's not bad to be honest. She's not bad at all, actually, so I wouldn't have minded having her in the faction, but apparently she hates me, so screw it, we're going to ransom her for 500 gold, that'll do. And as for the battle itself, yeah, 45 income is nothing, I'll take 16% replenishment, that's a really healthy amount of replenishment right there. And, uh, where's Sao Sao? I don't know where Sao Sao is and that worries me. Oh, and better and better, my second spy has also been promoted to the role of general. Because Gong Sun Zan likes just having as many flipping armies as possible, so anyone who's floating around just gets to become a general by default, pretty much. There we go, I've now got some big influence over one of his armies. And I'm the commander of this major force right here, love it. And here we go, this is actually a large city, level 6, not bad at all. So, in we go, why don't we? Oh yeah, I think we are good right here. In fact, okay, there's literally one person here. Is that, it's the same woman, right? We released her, her family paid for a release, but apparently she lives in this city. So, <laughs> all right, fine, whatever. We'll go and take care of her again, I suppose. In fact, if we capture her again, we might be able to ransom her a second time. Marvelous. Every slight, every insult, I will now repay. Yeah, by the way, pre-battle speeches are in this game. They just happen in the loading screen. But I'm not convinced she's going to be able to actually fulfill that vow. Because she's literally there on her own. And here we go, my first ever level 6 city. So yes, indeed, it is taking a fair bit of damage. City fairly on fire. I believe we should have a breach somewhere. Yes, we do already have a breach. Those towers have been destroyed. Sapping has already done good work right there. Yeah, we should be able to pretty much just walk straight in, in fact. There she is, over there. Right, we've got visibility of her. We just need to move the trebuchets into a position to start laying down some fire. In fact, I'm just going to send in Wang Zhu to go and murder her, because he can. Right, catapult, stop and open fire, and there we go. So, we can now start flinging rocks at her. How much health does she have? Not much. Not much at all. So... We'll try and fling some rocks at her. The chance of hitting her... Oh, she's hiding behind a wall. Very clever. Yeah, I think the trebuchet is just doing more damage to the city. So, I'm going to call off the trebuchet. The trebuchet doesn't need to do that anymore. Also, quite like how there's just some civilians here. These guys aren't soldiers. They're just civilians who apparently didn't realise they were being invaded. Because they're being invaded by literally one bloke. Who's just going to come around here and there she is. Right, now we need to just go and hit you with a sword for a bit. Sorry I haven't given you a better sword by the way. But you are taking on a strategist right now. So it shouldn't be a big deal. She basically can't fight back. That's not really her job. In fact, hang on, what's she even holding? What's she holding right now? Is she... Is she holding a fan? No, she has got a sword out there. Good, she does have one sword. No, it's back to the fan. Gotcha. You're going to want to surrender. 
Anytime. There we go. Right, leave her alone. Leave her alone. We might be able to ransom her again. So we went and hit her with a sword for a bit. And now she surrendered a second time. Now, did we get lucky and capture her again? Because somehow we got 275. And yes, indeed, we'll be occupying this place. Looting and occupying would reduce it to level 5. Which would be fine. And that would be a decent amount of money. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do a loot and occupy on this occasion. Just because it's level 6 right now. Level 5 is just fine. There we go. Big old pile of money for me. And we can spend some of the money just repairing this place up. Bloody hell, it's a bit on the expensive side. And that army is basically already back at full strength because of the 16% replenishment. We got a second to go. Love it. Ah, yes. And as for my new vanguard, let's just actually fill out his army a bit too. Give him... Do I want to give him one more unit of actual proper? Yeah, let's give him some proper cavalry. Go on then. And now we own what used to be the capital of Sao Sao. Screw you, Sao Sao, you stupid bastard. But it's autumn. And I know for a fact autumn is a really, really important moment for me. Because autumn this year is the moment when my deal with Tao Ying wears off. And Tao Ying right now has a large city to feed. Level 6. That's a lot of food they need. And guess how much food they produce? Oh, it's literally none. So yeah, they are running a minus 6 food deficit right now. So, 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 so. I might be willing to actually sell them some food. Absolutely. But as they're so desperate for it, how about that temple over there? How about you hand that straight over to me? Because at this point, I'm going to use their desperate need for food to basically extort them into handing over everything they own. There we go. In fact, the temple, they don't even consider that important. Because, of course, this is the only bit of territory they own inside that commandery. So to them, this is not that important. Food, however, food is extremely bloody important. So can we actually make this work just off food? Pretty much, yes. If I actually hand over 13 food a turn to them, they will just immediately give me that territory. And I have got a surplus of 31 food right now. So, actually, that's... It's worth a bit less after a certain point. That's into 0.7 a go, isn't it? Yeah, that's 1.5. After that point, I might just bung them a bit of money. Just in case, though. Actually, how do you feel about vassalization? Ooh... That's interesting. Vassalization is now open to me because I'm a Marquis. So they're actually sort of open to that, basically. Okay, don't worry about it for now. Don't worry about that just yet. But that's something to think about. Potentially, I might want to vassalize these guys after the next 10 turns of food runs out. There we go. Eight food a turn for 10 turns. 144 gold for 10 turns. That is nothing to me whatsoever. And they will basically just hand over the temple. There we go. Congratulations. You guys don't starve for another couple of years and I get more of your land. In fact, actually, that's very nice. Now the empire looks much more complete. And Yan Shu has actually taken visibility away from me because I believe the legitimacy he demands, that's actually, yeah, a time thing. It's only for 10 turns, then it wears off. In which case, I'm willing to give you that again because visibility is nice, but... I'm going to be wanting some money for that. No, I'm not giving you the money. I want the money. Yeah, I'll take 2,500 gold up front and 500 gold for the next 10 turns. He's willing to pay 7,500 gold total just for his little currency meets to fill up. 100% I'm willing to do that because, yeah, in 10 turns, that just wears off again. I can do it again. In fact, now I'm a Marquis, there is one more thing as well. And that is, uh, Lou Bay, wherever the bloody hell you've managed to get yourself these days, uh, we need to have a nice little chat, which is, uh, right now, we're actually just a coalition. But, we could actually upgrade that to, oh, he's totally up for it. He is actually totally up for that. I could actually become a military alliance. So at that point, it becomes binding. If one of us is attacked, the other one must respond. So, uh, it's an option. I'm not going to rush into it, but... It is an option. And if I recall correctly, the temple is... Yeah, actually, the temple's prestige. That's really nice. This is... I don't know if it's unique, but... Oh, it literally has one level. Yeah, it just provides uh, some prestige. Plus 10 satisfaction, faction-wide. Wow, I did not know that was so good, but that's really good. Now, just out of interest, I need to check in on Sao Sao right now. Because Sao Sao is... Well, he hates me. Understandably, he hates me, but... He is also probably starving to death at this point. Because sure, I've taken some big cities off him, but he still has at least two cities. And now he basically has no way to feed them. 
So, uh, he does not want peace. He doesn't want peace at all. And weirdly, actually, he doesn't even value food that highly. I'm genuinely very surprised. Alright, I guess we have to go and kick his ass one time before he's willing to listen to reason. In fact, had I thought about it, darn it, I've just made a bit of a mistake there. What I should have done is try to insist on the legitimacy thing with Yan Shu in return for this farmland over here. He might have been willing to hand that over just for legitimacy. I'm guessing Sao Sao's not going to quit until we've kicked his ass at least once. So, yeah, the question is, do we want to make a push for Yang Zhu? Because... My army is almost certainly ready for it right now. That's fine. And the garrison here is... Ah, the garrison here is not nothing, actually. If I assault that place, and a giant army of Sao Sao is just around the corner, I am going to be in a lot of flipping trouble. Those troops are basic stuff, sure, level 1 across the board, but a full stack army backed up by another 14 units. That's... that's not nothing. Oh, and in more heartening news, me, Heng, and Wang Zhu are now friends. That's lovely. And Cao Cao's new capitalist, in fact, ooh, the city I'm considering attacking. So, uh, I guess we have to go and give it a poke. We do have to go and give it a poke. The question is, uh, do I want to send my second army down there as well? Because uh, if I do, both of my armies will be located down over here. This leaves me pretty bloody wide open up here if Gonsun Zhang starts to make a play. Also, apparently Liu Dai doesn't like me very much, which is a bit on the harsh side. Apparently we've made treaties with his enemies. Ah, yes, of course, he's still actually technically at war with Yan Shu, and we just made that deal with Yan Shu. Fair enough, I can see why you'd be annoyed about that. So I guess we know what's coming next time, ladies and gentlemen. The showdown with Cao Cao. At least one of his armies has got to be marching north right now, and... Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take him to get there. We didn't declare war that long ago. We've been getting in and smashing this place pretty darn quickly. We can move and get Yang Zhu under siege immediately. The question is, how fast can we topple the place? And once we've taken it out, if we take it out, because if Cao Cao shows up with both his armies and that garrison, we're going to have no choice but to fall back. Do I try and hold the city? Because I don't think I can knock out Cao Cao in a single war. Because even if I in theory could... Uh, that is not a border I want to try and defend. That doesn't look like a fun time. Then again, I suppose if I was to knock out Kong Zhu over here, it wouldn't be that bad. We would be right down here by the river. Get myself some non-aggression packs with everyone on the far side of the river. Basically, our empire runs from river to river. Might not be the worst thing in the world. Right, worth thinking about, ladies and gentlemen. We will discuss that next time. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. This has been Total War Three Kingdoms. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. Oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then oh, come the chariots. Yeah.